All right, let's get her back in the water. How's it look? Kicking okay? Yeah, yeah, there he goes. Perfect. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Scott's smallmouth bass came off a weed rock transition. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. Water depth on top of the rock hump was 4 feet, tapering down to 12 feet on the outside edge. The hump was adjacent to healthy deep weeds that also led out into deeper water. Sean and Scott knew bass would be relating to the structure for two reasons. First, suspended bait and panfish were observed feeding between the rock and weed. Second, this particular structure offers larger, more cautious fish the ability to move up onto the transition area to feed and then move back down into deeper, more secure water at the base of the structure. The strike zone in this scenario was the small open band of deep water between the weed edge and the tapering side of the rock hump in eight feet of water. This location allows bass to wait in ambush on the deep weed edge. The rock hump allows bait fish or crayfish to be corralled fairly easily, offering little opportunity of escape for the unsuspecting prey. When fishing a new lake, look for areas that offer structure close to deep water. Locate humps and weed edges that emerge up from or drop off into the main lake basin. This particular body of water has an incredibly large population of bass that have no natural predators. This made it difficult to get a bait to the larger fish. Scott's larger smallmouth hit a salt-impregnated plastic twitch worm rigged on a weighted hook. Other great search baits for locating fish in midsummer are spinner baits, tubes, crank baits, top water baits, and jerk baits. Try slowly working tube jigs along deeper edges later in the day. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website.